here with Danny Gargan back at bar 19. Uh, coming into the Saratoga 2022 meet, you have a nice uh, horse in a, in a stakes race today, Dakota Gold. How's the horse been training? It's been doing really well. You know, he's a really cool horse. So. Ran really well the other day off of off the layoff, and uh, he's doing good. We expect a big effort today. You have a horse that's been definitely a fan favorite of a lot, Tax. Uh, had a nice win down at Delaware. Is it horse back up at Saratoga yet? Yeah, he's actually right here. He's always in the barn. He's always in the same stall, 17. He's been there since he's three years old. He's pretty, you know, he's our favorite. He's, you know, the fan favorite here. Everybody loves him. Uh, he was off for a long time the other day. He hadn't run in 532 days, and uh, ran actually ran a big big race at Delaware so we're probably gonna look for something here in the last book maybe run him at the end of the meet somewhere at uh, Saratoga may try the grass looking forward to something like that I've always wanted to run him on the grass we have breezed him on a couple times we just never never had the opportunity to race him on it yet but I'd love to run him here on this turf course when you make a, a switch like that especially a horse that, that's getting up there in age what, what, what would be the reason behind it uh, I know it sounds crazy when I claimed him a long time ago I entered him on the grass two or three times and the race never went and I ran him in the Remsen and he ran so good on the dirt how do you I mean he just you know you're on the derby trail you can't try the grass and then last year before he won this or the year before when he won the stake at Gulfstream I had two horses breezing on the grass I had Venezuelan hug and tax and I was going to run tax in the grass stake and then wait and run Venezuelan hug in a different race and just the dirt race was coming up so light, I ran tax in the dirt race, he won it, and Bill's running and Hug won the grass race. So it's just it's not something I've always wanted to try with him. You know, he is by Arch. He's out of John's Causeway Mary. He's bred for the grass. He's worked tremendous on it before. So well, we'll take a shot on it one. You know, and here, the way this turf course plays, I think he'd really suit him. We're up at Saratoga in the summer. Everybody's looking for those two-year-old babies. Anything you got in the barn that you're excited about? I don't really run a lot of, you know, win a lot of two-year-old races here. Usually we win one or two. I mean, I've got three or four that I really like that could be later in the meet. i got a colt named WNL that I think is a really special horse. Uh, I've got a filly named Show Em Your Hills. that She'll be the first one that we run that's going to be really live, a Munnings filly. I've got a colt named Torigo that's good. I mean, there's several really nice, talented horses in here. It's just when they get ready. Uh <laughs> In terms of barn size, are you a little bit bigger this year, smaller than usual? Uh, we're a little smaller. I think, well, COVID kind of slowed a lot of people. We, you know, we lost some owners. I probably have 40 in training, 40-something in training right now. Usually in the past we'd have, you know, but there are a lot of two-year-olds this year, so it's changed. Not so many claiming horses. In the, you know, we have 20-something two-year-olds instead of 25 claiming horses. So probably win less races this year, but I think in the next two years my, my stable will be a lot better barn. In terms of just last question for claiming, you know, we've seen 15 way shakes, 18 way shakes, 21 way shakes. I mean, this claiming game at Saratoga, is it the most fierce you've ever seen? I've only claimed two horses this year. And I claimed a horse the other day in, uh, for 62 5. He ran second. There wasn't a shake on him, but he was 26 to 1. A lot of people, you know, don't look at 26 to 1 shots. And I, I won a three way shake on Happy Farm yesterday, and he won pretty easy. I mean, just there's a. People just, it's crazy what they want. I mean, everybody wants to claim here. I don't know why. Uh, I think if you looked in the past, there's not been any good horses claimed at Saratoga. It's really not a place where people get a lot of great horses, and everybody thinks it is. But, uh, I mean, I've claimed a couple horses made a million dollars, and I didn't claim them at Saratoga. But, yeah, I don't know. Everybody thinks this is a place to claim. I've had more success in Kentucky, Florida, personally claiming. Well, best of luck today with Dakota Gold. Thank you. Here with Joel Rosario. Early in the morning, we're over by the uh, paddock. Joel, tell me a little about why you became a jockey and how it all started. Yeah, I me, mean, I, I I started in Dominican Republic, and uh, I remember when I was a little kid, so I used to love the horses, and, and I used to ride then, and you know, in the back in my backyard, with, you know, my father, and uh, yeah, we, one day he, they took me to a jockey school, and yeah, that's how I started. So tell me about when you first came to America. What was your, what was it like coming into walking into barns and asking guys for rides and 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 how did that all transpire? Yeah, it's part of this, you know, part of the, you know, how, the, you know, for a job, that's a part of what we do every day. And uh, yeah, we just uh, go by and you know you want to get in the horses, so we just go see people and uh, and stuff like that. And, yeah, it's 
the chance will come at some point. <laughs> in terms of your, your favorite mount of all time, what, what was the race that you, you won and you said, wow, I am, I'm, I'm a big time jockey now, I really made it? Well, um, I, when I won the Derby, it was a, you know, like a dream come true for me. And uh, I mean, never thought, you know, it was gonna happen, you know, for me, just especially coming from the Dominican Republic and stuff like that. But uh, really happy it happened and uh, thanks for all the people that always support me. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, what you do to keep yourself healthy and in shape? And I mean, not just the weight, but it, it's also just a, definitely a grind on the body um, on a horse every day. What do you do to like keep yourself in shape and, and fit? Well, I mean, I work out and beside the horses and I also work out with the horses. And it's very important and, and to stay fit and, and stuff like that. But yeah, you, you, we ride pretty much almost every day. So um, you stay fit that way, but I do some other exercise to just uh, uh, make your body a little stronger to when you get in the horse and you're not really coming back flowing more than the horse. <laughs> Last question for you, you know, this jockey colony is extremely competitive. Mm -hmm. What is it like being in a room with pretty much the top 10 jockeys in the world every day and riding with them? Is that competition just the most amazing thing? Yes, it is amazing. I, I mean, like you see right here, so I told you we have a, the best jockey here. In the, in the whole country probably you know and uh yeah that's very competitive it's not you, you go there and you can feel all those guys they they they, yeah, they just uh amazing athlete and uh, they are you they they do everything they can you know to try to teach in the race and then yeah just for me it's a great feeling to be here then then, then i like that like uh, i like the competition too so i i, I enjoy that I have to say, I'm, I'm very impressed when you guys go back to the jockey room after battling it out. You're still high-fiving and good friends, and the competition only on, stays on the racetrack. And once you get off, you're, you're still good buddies. Yeah, like, of course, of course. It's just, uh, you know, we all go friends out, but when they come to the race, they, <laughs> it's a different story. Well, best of luck on your mounts today. Thank you so much. Here with Jason Blewett. Uh, Client relations for West Point Thoroughbreds. Jason, talk to me about the ownership experience and what you guys do here in the morning at Saratoga. Yeah, we're out every every single morning, Wednesday through Sunday, okay. and it really is. I mean, this place and Del Mar too, but being a New York guy, Saratoga is obviously very near and dear to me, like it is to many people. So we are out every single morning. Our partners have carte blanche to join us, and it's about getting that access, getting them close to to this. I mean, how, where else would you would you rather be in July or August than standing right here? So we kind of commandeer the coffee stand. That's our our spot. And uh, you know, Tom Bellhouse, who's a Saratoga, an upstater, twelve months out of the year. He's the general, and we just we get a big crowd out here and people that are just enjoying being in Saratoga, just living it up and, and really relishing every second that they're in upstate New York here at the spa. Can you tell me a little bit about your, your program right now? You guys have quite a number of two-year-olds that are coming up. Yeah, we've got, I think the number is 65 two-year-olds. Uh, some we own 100% of, others we own in partnership with some other outfits. So the stable itself, West Point, has just grown in leaps and bounds even over the last decade. And we're coming off a record, record-setting year just in terms of, of sales and horses syndicated. So we've got we've got an army, I mean, literally an army of, of two-year-olds. And it's neat because we're, we're coast to coast. We've got a super strong string out with John Sadler in California and here on the East Coast. We've got some uh, some two-year-olds to look out for, for Shug, Steve Asmussen, Christoph. Kamant and Todd Pletcher to name a few. Anybody racing this weekend or the next couple days? So we've got a, a Philly and Cherie DeVoe, by the way, who's picked up a number of our, our babies and it's amazing and really great having Cherie in, in the mix. I really uh, liked uh, working alongside her thus far on the West Point side and uh, I know Cherie's going to do a great job. We've got a, a gunrunner Philly named Bava who enters later today and, and her name translates to strong, I think in Polish. Don't quote me on that, <laughs> um, but it, it does 
does it does translate to strong. She's entering today for Sunday, actually, and she's our first ever gun runner that we've had in West Point. So excited to see her run. I'll give you a couple others. We've got Mademoiselle Jackie, who should be running in the next uh, week and change up here for Christoph Kamant. She's an American Pharaoh Philly, and Chug's got a City of Light cult for us named Battle of Normandy, who's really come on in a in a big way over the last few weeks, and he should be running. Uh, in the, I'd say in the next couple of weeks as well. Well, we'll keep a lookout for that Sunday gun runner. Those babies have been doing extremely well. So hopefully you can get a win for West Point. Thanks for your time. Yeah, always great. Always great joining Horse Racing Nation. You guys are the best. Thanks.